Okay, hi guys, this is Tam and Tom, and we're going to be talking to you a little bit about ATP. Um, we're going to talk about what it is and why it's so important. Uh, so just to start off, a few things about ATP. Uh, Tom, do you want to take us through Sure, um, it's a nucleotide. You might remember having met those last year. Um, they are the monomers used to build up nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. Um, and this particular nucleotide is adenosine phosphate, um, or triphosphate, when it's got three attached. Um, it's a product of respiration, so it can be described as a universal energy currency, which um, is quite a nice way of, of describing it, I think. Yep, so it's why it's good is it releases a small manageable amount of energy. Um, so the sort of analogy is, if you've got a £50 note, that's all well and good, but you can't you know, go and buy yourself a bag of crisps with it. Um, but if you split your £50 note into pound coins, then it's much more handy for buying little things. So the £50 note might be a glucose molecule, um, and the pound coins might be the ATP that is generated from it. Cool. Uh, it's used in lots of different reactions and it's made from adenosine diphosphate or ADP and an inorganic phosphate um, written as PI or phosphate inorganic. Okay. Um, so just in order for you to kind of get to grips with ATP as a structural sort of molecule, it'd be really useful if you just pause the video and draw a nucleotide. Okay. Um, basic structure, you don't need to draw down all the carbons and whatnot. So you should have got something kind of like that, okay? And if those of you who love chemistry, you might have drawn something a bit more elaborate like this. Um, okay, so if we just compare that then to ATP, we'll see that it's actually fairly similar, okay? So there's adenosine on the left and there's adenosine triphosphate on the right, okay? And um, as you can notice there, we've actually got three phosphate groups, okay, hence tri. All right. Um, so, Tom, why don't you take some Okay, time? so if we've got this ATP stuff, um, this sort of pound coin inside the cell, how is the energy actually used? Well, it's used in um, a reaction which hydrolyzes the one of the P's off the ATP to produce a DP. So because it's hydrolysis, we need water um, to break the bond. Um, and then we release the ADP, the inorganic phosphate that we've snapped off. And in the process, there is overall a release of energy, about 30 kilojoules per mole. Um, now, we're not going to go into, in this video anyway, why energy is released, because some of the chemists may be raising their eyebrows now. Um, <laughs> if we're breaking bonds, why is energy released? Um, but overall, there is a release of energy. So My eyebrows are raised, definitely. Okay, um, so this is a reversible reaction, so it can be used, um, obviously it can take place in the opposite direction, so ADP can be um, phosphorylated uh, back into ATP, which means that obviously phosphate is added. All right, so if we were to look at that in terms of like a sort of, I don't know, cyclical kind of reaction, it would look a little bit like this. It can go from ATP back to ADP, back to ATP, which is really useful in a cell because ultimately it means that you can use it for energy yielding and energy consuming reactions, both of them, which is good. Okay, um, so what would be really cool again is if you can pause the video and just write down a few things that you think ATP is used for. Uh, you'll probably should be able to get a fair few, I reckon. And this is what we've got. Uh, so, Tom. <laughs> oh, so I'm just <laughs> transfixed by the small rodent. There. Yeah, that's my pet hamster. I'm quite sure. Is it's it really? Bernie. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Cute, I wish. Oh, I did use some hamster, but um, my friend's mum stole him because he said she basically she thought that we weren't taking good care of him. No and way. we were, yeah, we were. She was just a weirdo. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, well, hamsters obviously do use ATP in a variety of reactions. Um, so this hamster might, for example, be contracting its muscles um, when it's kicking its little legs, for example, and that uses ATP. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so it might be synthesizing kind of hamster enzymes or whatever. Absolutely. Um, what you can see down here in the right-hand corner, bottom right, is like a 
sort of a, a neural knob essentially which is like the end of a neuron and that's releasing loads of stuff you can see all that little white stuff coming out into the, the sort of little gap there which you'll learn more about later on but essentially to be able to synthesize and transport stuff that requires ATP as well absolutely and, and actually transmitting the electrical impulse along the nerve also requires ATP um, so um, active transport, nerve transmission, secretion, synthesis, muscle contraction and lots of other um, metabolic reactions so to keep the cells alive and to allow the cells to do their jobs ATP is required to live yeah without ATP in fact I mean why cells die is because they run out of ATP and that's and again if you're interested in rigor mortis and all that kind of stuff there's loads of really good stuff uh, linked into sort of the, the stopping of ATP production and, and rigor mortis and whatnot. Anyway, um, bye bye. Okay, Tom, uh, why do you think ATP is better than glucose? Oh, well, um, well, I suppose the... Oh, a table. Oh, yes, yeah. we, we, we can, <laughs> let's, let's make a table. Um, so glucose is, is packed full of energy. Um, but in order to release the energy from a glucose mo um, molecule, you have to do lots and lots of reactions. So it's sort of broken down in a, in a stepwise process. Um, and if all the energy was released from the glucose at once, there would be too much. So ATP allows you to um, release the energy in the glucose in small, manageable sort of um, slices. There we go, found it. Okay. Yeah. So it's much more useful. Um, so we have a single reaction when the energy is released from ATP as opposed to lots of reactions if you're trying to get the energy from the glucose um, and you release a small manageable amount, 30 kilojoules per mole, um, whereas with glucose very much more energy would be released and the cell would, um, well it would burn itself up yeah, too much good. too quickly. Uh, other couple of things, so there we go, we've mentioned it's universal currency, Lots of different metabolic reactions. Done. Okay. Uh, types of phosphorylation. So, Tom, again, what is phosphorylation? Well, if, well, all of this means is adding um, a phosphate. That's all that means. So, what what this is going to be is basically how ATP is generated by the cell. And there's although it's generated in the process of respiration, glucose used to produce ATP from ADP and PI. And there are a number of different types of this adding of the phosphate, for example. There we go. So, yeah, so oxidative phosphorylation. You guys are going to learn a lot more about this in the next video, uh, which me and Tom are going to do in a minute about respiration. So, oxidative phosphorylation takes place in the mitochondria. As given in the name, it requires oxygen and it uses electron carriers or like an electron transport chain, as you've also learned about it. And you will also learn a little bit later on um, about photosynthesis. And photosynthesis also produces ATP um, in a similar process, but it's the actual the, the driving force for this is light. So when ATP is produced in the light by uh, plants, for example, it is photophosphorylation. This occurs in the chloroplast. Um, also uses an electron transport chain, um, and is something we'll discuss in detail later on. Uh, and there's our last one, substrate level phosphorylation. So again, you're going to learn about this a bit more in respiration. It's fairly straightforward. The idea is that the phosphate comes off the substrate. Okay. So in our little picture here with the enzyme, bottom right hand corner with the enzyme and the substrate, you can see the phosphate's coming directly out of that and it's been provided to the ADP. Okay. Um, so it's just, it's quite good actually when we come on to respiration to just notice where the phosphates are and you know are they being used to phosphorylate something or are they just sort of being used in transition okay anyway I think that's basically